In this video, we're going to be doing two things. Uh, we are going to be, first off, setting up our shooting to revert back to using the net multicast, which we commented out in, I think, the first section. And the second thing we're going to be discussing is game modes and game states. So kind of when to use what and what is the purpose and what kind of information should be stored in which one and just kind of their general use. So first things first, let's go ahead and uh, reset up our multicast. I'm going to go ahead and uncomment all the, everything that I have here. I'm going to go ahead and leave this up for a couple seconds. So you can pause and retype. And for the validate, just return true. Now back in our character, uncomment out the header. And I'll leave this here for a second. Alrighty. Next up, let's go ahead and comment out our, uh, well, let, yeah, comment out everything related to onrep because we are no longer going to be using it. So I comment out our replicated variable and our onrep function. And we comment out the onrep function in the .cpp. We remove all the well, we comment out the server-related stuff. Why do you keep on minimizing? And in the multicast, I am also going to actually remove this log where we show shots fired. And in our server fire implementation, let's just uncomment our multicast call. So next thing, we have to go up to our constructor here. Move our shots fired variable because we comment well, sorry, comment out our shots fired variable because it's commented out in the header. And we no longer need our get lifetime replicated props. So we can comment that out because all it was doing was replicating our shots fired variable. And finally, we just have to change our on fire function. So on fire is going to, so if we're not the server, we'll make a call to the server using the server RPC. But if we are the server, we want to just fire a multicast. So we're just going to do multi underscore on fire, and we're going to pass in spawn location and spawn rotation and compile. And with any luck, we will be back to actually shooting accurately uh, for all clients. So let's give this a second to compile. Alrighty. There we go. Let's relaunch the project and make sure it works. And then we will be discussing the game mode and the game state. It's going to be a very brief one, but hopefully it'll be uh, informative before we actually go through and implement it. So let's do a test. I shoot. All right, that's accurate. And that's accurate. So we are good to go. Now, Let's move on to the games. Let's start with the game mode. So literally as the name states, it's a game mode. So when you're playing something such as Call of Duty and you select the game mode Team Deathmatch, the logic behind Team Deathmatch would be something that we would put in the game mode. Now, the game mode is something that only exists on the server. So if you try to access it, for example, on the client, you're not going to be able to you just can't really do any of that stuff. Everything has to be handled on a server because the server is authoritative. And the main reason for that is everything that you want to have handled in the game mode, that is something you want to have done on the server. So like when a player gets a kill, you would want to make a, well, call a function from the server that is on the game mode and give that game, you know, pass in whatever information you need, such as the player who did the killing and the player who got killed. That's just an example. And then the game mode will then go get a reference to a, a, uh, the game state. And it will, you know, add a point to whatever team the killer, uh, whatever team the killer is on. So the game state interacts with the game mode and vice versa. They're very intertwined. So 
let's discuss like a basic I think a free for all would be the easiest. So anytime that you get a kill, like you kill another player, you make a call to the game mode that says, hey, this player killed, you know, this player. So what you do from there is, well, actually, that's not a good idea for the uh, game state. That would be more really regarding the player state, which we'll get into in another video. Uh, okay, team deathmatch actually is a much better example. So let's say we have team A and team B. A player on team A kills a player on team B. It sends a call to the or calls a function on the game mode, passing in, you know, player A or the player that's on team A and the player that's on team B for the first and second parameter. That then just makes sure that it's not a friendly fire, assuming that's a feature you have in your game. And if everything is good to go, then it makes a call it moves over to the game state. So because player on team A killed player on team B, we're going to increment a variable saying, well, that pretty much controls the amount of kills that team A has. So every time that a player on team A gets a kill, that variable is going to go up. Every time a player on team B gets a kill, their variable for kills is going to go up. And those variables are stored on the game state. Now, unlike the game mode, the game state does exist on the uh, on clients as well. So that's where you would put like a bunch of replicated variables. So you would only want to interact really with the game state from the server for setting information, but from the client, you are free to pull whatever information you want. So if you wanted to have a, uh, like let's say somewhere at the top here, you have a widget that displays the score or the total amount of kills for each team. So on the left side would be player's A kills, and the right side would be player B's kills. So what we could do is we could set up just a simple on-rep event to those, uh, those variables, for example, or even if you have some other way of triggering the event. But any time, so you would make the player, or sorry, you would make the team A, you would replicate their kills variable, and you would also replicate team B's kills variable. So whenever those variables change, assuming they're set up with some sort of event, so whenever they change that event fires, you will just go ahead and get the game state, get those two variables, and update your widget that way. So that way you can visibly see you know, how many kills each team has gotten, and it continually updates each time. Or you could do the same thing with score, and that sort of thing. So a game mode, for the most part, is just the logic behind the game mode. The game state is pretty much just a place to store all your data and that you can replicate for other clients to see. So in my case, with my Nazi Zombie series, if I wanted to have a zombie counter that displayed the total amount of zombies remaining, well, what I would do is I would make a variable that is replicated on the game state and periodically every time a zombie gets killed I would fire an event that tells other clients hey a zombie was just killed go ahead and update your widget so the widget would grab the game state and get that new variable of how many zombies are remaining so that way they can see okay we had 50 zombies the zombie just killed now it displays 49 and that's pretty much how they kind of interact so what we're going to be doing in the next video is we're going to be implementing just a very basic kind of system of this. Now we don't have any sort of damage or anything like that set up, so what we're going to be doing is anytime our projectile hits another player, so like this for example, I shoot him, it hits, I want to store a variable, well alter a variable on the game state that pretty much just slowly tallies up the uh, amount of sh well hits so like a, a hit count so anytime a player shoots another player i want that variable to go up and the way we're going to achieve this is let's go over to our projectile that comes with our uh, class here not sure why you're all complaining but in our on hit from here we're going to do a simple check because we want again the server to be authoritative we want to go ahead and make a call to the game mode. The game mode is then going to get the game state 
and alter a replicated variable that is on the game state. And from there, we can just regularly print out logs that show that variable. Because we're not, I don't think I'm going to set up any sort of widgets just for showing, well, displaying a variable. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, feel free to help support me on Patreon. That is linked in the description. And if you have any questions or anything like that, or specific to this series or anything that I do, feel free to join my Discord and ask away. So, as usual, I will see you in the next video.